Hi everyone. So today we're going to make a fun Copic colored autumn scene using MFT stamps new squirrels stamp set that was just released in August of 2019. So let's get started by stamping our images onto a piece of Copic friendly cardstock. And this is cut down to a two size card and it is Express It Blend It card, which is my favorite paper for Copic coloring at the moment. It's a very smooth paper and it allows the colors to sit on top of the page instead of seeping right into the cardstock and I feel it gives you a better blend and also it I think it, it makes you use less ink. So that's why I am loving Express It blending card at the moment. So I'm also masking the images after I stamp them with the exception of these branches. The branches I'm not going to bother masking, but the little squirrels, the acorn, and the mushrooms I did mask. We're going to build in our scene now by adding a road into the center of the scene. And we're going to make the road get more narrow as we get um, higher up on the page. Because for perspective purposes, the road is going to look smaller and lighter the farther that it gets away from us. So the way to think of it is that the very bottom of the page would be what's closest to us and then what's at the top of the page would be what's farthest away with the exception of those little leaves that are hanging down um, in, front of the, in, in front of the entire scene. They're close to us as well. Not sure if I just made things much more confusing or if I actually made cleared things up a little bit there, but let's move along. So I am just adding in some shading with some yellow and golden tones here. I want my lightest yellows to be at the center of the scene and then my mid-tone yellows to be further off to the sides. And then we're also going to add a little bit of coral tones and orange tones and then some yellow green as well here and there. And now we can start building up our road. And to build up the road, I'm going to slow things down a little bit and we are going to take our marker from the base of the section of the road we're working on and we're just going to pull upwards. And by pulling upwards, we're going to create the effect of some greenery and a little bit of depth on the sides of the road. It's kind of, this is one of my favorite things to do. It just looks like magic as you start adding in the sides of the road. It really, all of a sudden the scene starts to take on a whole bunch of dimension. And then once we have our base of the road done, I'm going to go back and with some thinner strokes, I'm going to add some YG 93 and then some YG 95 just to build up the little grasses that are on the side of the road. And I like that the edges are imperfect because it matches what you would think a dirt road in the middle of the forest would look like. You wouldn't expect it to be perfect like a paved road, but you'd expect little notches of grass to be kind of poking out here and there. Now I'm working on our little acorn that is half buried on the side of the road and we are going to cover him over with some grass in a little bit, but we'll get back to that in a moment. And now we're going to work on our leaves. And for our leaves, we're going to make them in all the lovely shades of autumn. So we're going to have some reddish purple leaves like I am creating now. And then we're also going to have some golden leaves, some orange leaves, some yellow green leaves. And I think that that's it. And maybe some more pure yellow colored leaves and maybe a few brown ones here or there. And I'm going to stick to the same color combinations throughout for my leaves. And I'm going to speed up a little bit now until we're completed with the leaves because I think you get the picture. And then once we finish working on our leaves, then we're going to color in the little branches that are um, kind of all around the scene. So we've got about three or four branches that we're going to color in. And we're going to use some E20 markers for the branches. And the reason I chose this series of colors is because it's a really, really bright and bold brown. 
And there's going to be so much going on in the scene that we really need these branches, which are supposed to be in the forefront of the scene, to stand out. And coloring them in these dark, bold colors will help. Now we're going to add some little trees um, farther back into the distance. And then we're going to also have some other trees that are closer to us. And the method that I'm using is that for trees that are farthest back, they're going to be shaded in very light, in very thin lines, and they're going to start higher up on the page. And then for trees that are closer to us, they're going to be shaded in with darker shades of brown, and they're going to have thicker trunks. So that you get this sense that we are looking at a path that is kind of moving out away from us into the distance. So things that are closest to us are going to be the things that are the brightest color, the largest images, um, and they're going to be the closest to the bottom of the page. So that's kind of the method to the to my madness there in adding in the trees. And I'm just adding one base color to the trees for now. At the Towards the end of the video, we're gonna go back and add some shading to the trees that are closer to the front. So just ignore them from now for now and let's start coloring in our little squirrels. So for the little squirrel here on the left, I actually, my mask pulled up a little bit of the Express It blending card when I pulled the mask off. That's the first time that's ever happened to me with um, the Simon Says Stamp masking paper. The reason I use that masking paper is because that never happened. So I think it was just an anomaly. I must have pulled too hard on the little squirrel when I was taking the mask off. So for our little squirrels, I'm going to color them in with some E40s, which is um, a favorite color family of mine to color in little forest critters like these little squirrels here and I'm going to try to leave the right side of the squirrel's face a little bit light because we see our light source is coming in like kind of from the top and from the back of the scene so we're just imagining like a really late afternoon sun that that's just maybe getting ready to set. Maybe it's like three or four o'clock in the, in the forest and we're getting these really, really lovely like golden hues um, just in the forest right now in the scene. So I'm going to color the second squirrel the same way that I colored the first squirrel. And while I do that, I just have one question for you. So I just switched microphones. So I thought I would upgrade my microphone game on YouTube so I bought this fancy new microphone and um, I'd like to hear from you like what you think of the sound quality I think it's gonna probably take me a few videos to get the get the sound just right um, with my old microphone I just kind of plugged it in and hooked it onto my um, the the collar of my shirt and just talked and it was fine but this one is a little bit more more powerful and I have controls and I can um, kind of turn some things up, some things down and I don't quite understand what all those things are. So um, if I'm popping my peas a little bit too much, just bear with me. I'm sure in the coming weeks I will um, figure it out and hopefully this will give the videos a little bit better, more clear sound quality. That's what I hope, but there's going to be a learning curve until we, until we're perfect. So now we're just about done with this little squirrel. So I'm gonna color in the acorns now. And I'm gonna use some E50s for the acorns. I don't often use this color family. I find that sometimes when I blend with the E50s, I get like a weird like greenish um, tinge sometimes in my images. And I don't quite understand why the E50s do that, but there were so many browns in this scene that I had already gone to all my tried and true brown families like E40s and E20s and um, it was just time to try a new brown. But I think they look okay um, and I do like that they're nice and bright because they do stand out against the scene. For our little mushrooms, I'm going to color them in with my favorite red combination which is YR12 for our highlight color and then R39 R24 and R29. 
And then we're going to add a little bit of dirty markings to our little mushrooms there just to make them look realistic. But I'm trying to keep a little bit of the white in the scene because the white in the, on the stems because we're really not going to have any white in the scene. Everything is going to be colored by the end. So now what I'm doing is I'm just stippling on some color to kind of mimic fall foliage in the background. So my areas that are yellow, I'm just stippling in some Y11 and that's going to be my lightest stippled shade for my yellows. And then I'm going to add some Y21 to some of the areas of the um, the yellow and then also to like the orangish, orangish yellow tones. Now we're going to add some little orange foliage with the YR12. And I'm just kind of going here and there wherever it seems like it should be. I'm coloring over sometimes some of the little yellow areas because nature would do that too. It just kind of goes where it pleases. Um, for our little coral parts of the scene. Sorry, I think my, I popped my pee on that one. I apologize. I'll do better in the future. Um, we're going to use R56 for our stippling color. And then for the yellow green areas, we are going to use YG97. And then I'm also going to add some more little blades of grass to the sides of the road and in the ground towards the front of the scene. And I'm going to add a few different colors of yellow green here as I build out that grass. So now I'm using some YG95. I'm also going to use some YG93 and extend that higher and use a lot of it towards the back of the scene because again, the back of the scene is farthest away from us. So that's where the grass would appear lightest and skinniest. And now I'm going to work on covering up our little half buried acorn in the grass on the side of the road here. And I think he looks good. He looks, um, I'm sure he won't be forgotten. I'm sure a little squirrel will find him, even though he dropped off of the pile of the little squirrel in the center of the path. So I'm just like adding some dark shades here at the front of the scene just to help separate it, help to, to set, situate the scene a little bit better, I think. Help reinforce the depth. And now we're going to start shading in our path with E42 for the base. And before we finish shading the path, we're going to color in our little tree stump here. And I'm gonna use my E50s again, just again, because I've used all my other um, e favorite E families of colors. And the E53 did a nice job on the acorn, so I thought it could probably work pretty good here with our little tree stump. And I'm liking um, the coloration here. I think that it looks really, really bright. Now we're going to add some shading to the path with E43. And I'm just kind of going in a random pattern with this, um, except I am trying to make a little bit of a shadow underneath the squirrel. And then these darker lines here, they're just random. It's just to add a little bit of interest to the scene and I will blend them out with some um, lighter brown shades in a moment, just to maybe, maybe it looks like there's some indentations in the road. Maybe there are some shadows, just some, a little something, something to make the road interesting. And then I just darkened up that shadow underneath our little squirrel. Oh, and disaster just struck, but don't worry, we're going to fix it. I just, I'm going to color in the little squirrel a little bit darker to accommodate the big yellow splooch of color that he got on his head. And then I just wiped off um, the excess yellow. And then at first I thought, I'm like, well, maybe we'll just um, put another acorn in the middle of the road just to cover up that little yellow blob. Uh, but the acorn is gonna come out looking pretty dark so ultimately we're going to put the sentiment over half of the acorn so that we'll still get the benefit of having it look like there is a little acorn that's dropped in the road um, and we'll have our sentiment cover, cover over the part of the acorn that is colored a little bit oddly compared with the other acorns in the scene. So 
Another thing I wanted to point out is that for my foliage, for my stippling, I did put a second layer of darker stippling in for each shade and I made sure only to use it pretty sparingly. So only covering about a third of the area that was covered by the original um, layer of stippling. And the reason for this is just to give some interest and depth to the scene to make it look like maybe there are shadows, maybe there are some leaves that are closer to us than others, just to make things interesting looking. Now we're gonna add the shading on the trees that I was talking about before. We're gonna focus the shading on the right side of the trees that are on the right side of the page and then on the left side for the trees that are on the left side of the page. Just so again, it looks like that light source is coming like dead center from the back of the scene, from behind the squirrel. Like there's a little, you know, just imagine a little afternoon, autumn afternoon sun. It's maybe three or four in the afternoon. The sun is pretty low in the sky and it's just kind of shining right behind that little squirrel. And don't worry, we're gonna fix the the little light spot on above his nose. So don't think I forgot about that. Well, actually at this point, I don't think I realized that um, he had a light spot, but we will, I will figure it out and, and fix that in a moment. Okay, so there we are. I'm fixing up the little light spot on the squirrel. And now we're just gonna add in some highlights with a white gel pen. Just gonna add some little dots to the mushrooms, some little highlight highlights to the shells on the acorns and then some little dots here and there around the foliage and then also some little scribbles on the leaves sometimes I put dots sometimes I put like odd little scribbles just try not to think too much about it just um, you know just want to add some interest and white um, adding white highlights will will help with that especially in a scene like this where there's so much going on. Now we're gonna add the whole thing to an AT size card base. And we're gonna add our sentiment that says, I am nuts about you. And we're gonna cover up our little mistake. And we still do have a little bit of a yellow swatch in the center, but I think that that kind of looks like some of the reflection of the sunlight streaming through the back of the scene. So it all worked out perfectly. All right, so that's all I have for you today, everyone. I hope you give this card a try. It's a lot of fun and I'm sure anyone you give it to would love it. I will see you again soon in the next video.